Okay, all right, getting started on this. We're gonna make this quick. I should have done this probably a few rounds ago, probably something like after Austria or Spain or something like that. I don't know if I can really count this as the midseason, but you know what, we're already here. We're gonna do a midseason report. Let's, let's do this. We're gonna roll through very quickly. We're gonna go through 22 to, to number one. So we're not gonna count like Joshua Mason, for example. We're keeping Brad Benavidez in the mix. We're going through. We're gonna do uh, all 20 drivers, sorry, 22 drivers, and put them in a little power rankings formula. It's not, this isn't the season, as much as that's just preseason predictions. We're just gonna go ahead and ignore that. This is the midseason rankings. We're gonna have in the box the name of the driver as well as how much they dropped from my original rankings. Give people an idea a little of uh, where they changed. So yeah, let's start at the bottom. I believe it, it'll go right to 22 right now, correct? Oh crap, it did not. Oh, that's my bad. That's my bad. Well, you guys get a 2 one one right now. You got Brad, oh that's not, now it's blank again. <laughs> I'm being sloppy tonight. We got Brad and Benavides. Yeah, just without a doubt, easily the, the the bottom driver we predicted him to be at the bottom. And Amory Cordiel. We thought he was gonna be pretty low also. It's been, if anything, maybe a little bit more disappointing than even he would have wanted it to be. Uh, we're gonna roll through quickly, so move uh, that should put us up to number 20 now, right? Don't get don't show me two people. Please don't show me two people. Clement Novelak. Now I know what you're thinking. At the time this is released, this guy would probably have a higher ranking. But you know what? These rankings are based pre-Zanvoort, so I'm sticking to that because that's when the midsummer season break was. So Clement Novelak, P20, had a very, very disappointing season, but I don't think anyone's actually really too shocked. He's had a tough time in F2 and driving a trip for Trident. It was never really going to go well. Moving on to P19, we got Roy Nassani. The guy's still in F2. Is he going to be in F2 next year? Probably. I don't know if he's already announced something. I have no clue. But Roy Nassani, you're down in P19. No one's really surprised. You have a good result every now and then. Somehow you pull it out, but never managed to actually uh, convert the good qualifying into a result. It is what it is. P18, Roman Stanek. One of those drivers who I think is a pretty decent driver. I think he's similar to Novelak in a way where it's probably actually a midfield driver but he stuck driving for Trident this year not looking like he's having a great result up in P17 I put Juan Manuel Correa well, definitely one of the drivers who I did not understand why he was dropping to F2 I think F3 was kind of his peak as far as the European calendar goes you should use his imagery and take it to the states um, what little um, spotlight he's gotten out of the whole drive to survive imagery that has sadly helped him with publicity probably um it is what it is he's actually been better than what i expected him to be but he's still not doing great down in p17 in my rankings p16 ralph boshan now i think especially after round one this is a very, very disappointing result. I think Campos is actually a very, very good team. They just happen to have Rolf Boschong driving for them, which is a terribly mean thing to say. It's absolutely an awful thing to say, but Rolf Boschong is not a top tier driver. He's, a, he's, a, he's good at kind of setting that low end of the pace. Like you can see, I had him, I had him estimated to be about P4 teams. Just, yeah, kind of midfield driver. Driving for Campos, who I think is a fantastic team, just don't have the drivers. P15, I put Isaac Hajar. This is probably a very disappointing result for him, I would say. I know he had very, very high expectations within the Red Bull team. I just, I don't think high tech is a top team. Like it seems ever since about 2020, they've taken a couple steps back. They had that potential to start being a top team, but hasn't really clicked. And for, unfortunately for Isaac, I think this is disappointing I know he's a rookie but I think he's got to, probably gonna be disappointed with the results so in p14 I put his teammate Jack Crawford another rookie um, so I, I think I basically had these two essentially swapped it's pretty much doing about as expected maybe arguably a little bit better 
he's just kind of there in the midfield, just kind of rocking around. It is what it is. It's your rookie season in that too. Just got to hope to try and build on it for next year. P13, I've got Arthur Leclerc. Probably one of the biggest disappointments of the year. This driver has a lot of potential behind him. I don't know if it's the team. I don't know if it's him. It is his rookie season, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I do remember how many seasons. Did he do two seasons in F3 or three? I don't remember, but I remember his rookie season in F3 also didn't go good. So he gets the benefit of the doubt. Not everyone has a good, great rookie season. Not everyone can be Oscar Piastri. It is what it is. P12, I put Kush Miney. He's actually been shockingly good in F2. I know I had him very much at the beginning of the season as one of those drivies, drivers like, why is he here? It's still pretty obvious that there has to be money involved considering his re result in F3. There's a thousand percent there's money involved. But you know what? Every now and then, uh, Kush managed to put in a good performance. He's a good middle of the pack driver. Every now and then has a good solid qualifying, gets a good result. He's there. And P11, I've got Jehan Daruvala. He's gotta be disappointed with this season. Uh, dropped from the Red Bull Academy, back for another year in uh, Form Formula 2, when th is this, is, this is what, his third year or fourth year? I can't remember, but either way, he's back for another year. I think it's his fourth year, um, but I know he's off at the end of the season. I would have, he probably would have wanted to end it with a very, very good result, but it does not seem like it's going that way at all. He's actually doing even worse than I predicted, not by much, but it's not having a great year. P12, P12, nope, that's, I, I can't count. In P10, we got Richard Vershoor. So I think, I think Richard's a very good driver who's just never had opportunity and a top team. I feel like he, he hasn't really had a full season's drive until outside of last year, because I think it was two years ago he got like half a season or something like that. But regardless, I think he's just a, a solid midfield driver. He's similar to similar to Jahan, similar to Kush, similar to Arthur. Every now and then, he's put on a great performance. I think for sure got to win a couple races ago, if I'm not uh, incorrect. I can't remember which race it was. And then I think it was last year he got a, a win taken from him through a disqualification, if I'm remembering correctly. He's a good driver. He's a good driver. Won't be an F1, I don't think, but he's a good driver. P9, I got Zane Maloney, rookie driver, came from the Trident team last year, got a job in Carlin, a, dro a job, a drive, same thing. But yeah, P9, I think it's been a pretty good rookie season for him. He's been able to take it to uh, Fittipaldi every now and then. Which I think that alone, considering Fittipaldi, I wouldn't call him a veteran, but I think he's now technically in his third season. To be able to do that against a third year driver is that alone is pretty good, even if you're not necessarily beating him. Even if you're, I wouldn't even say he's very far off from Fittipaldi as much as it's obvious at that at this point that Fittipaldi is higher in the rankings. But I wouldn't say Maloney's too far off. I'd say give him, give him another year, maybe a, maybe a, maybe a third year. I think Maloney could be potentially um, a contender in the next year or two. And P8, I put his teammate, Fittipaldi. I knew I, I knew he wasn't too much higher than uh, Maloney. I think Fittipaldi is probably one of those drivers who's got to be a little bit disappointed in this season. He was probably wanting to move into more of a contender's role, having gotten that uh, Red Bull Junior Academy seat now, gotten into a much better team. I think he would have been really wanting to elevate his performance you know but it is what it is unfortunately i remember last year giving him a bit, little bit of a lower rank than others might have put him and it seems like he's kind of trending towards that area again and been p7 i've got dennis hauger now i think this has been a very disappointing uh, season for him especially considering his second year F f2 he dominated in f3 so i would have thought given it'd be maybe a similar bit of a path well not the same path in f2 but at least something a bit more contending i know he had a whole lot of bad luck at the beginning of the season like just getting those awkward timing of the red flags and qualifying for instance but you still got to make the best out of it he hasn't always been able to do that but p 7s nothing to be laughed at it's only his second year give him a, give him give him a third year See what see what he can do, whether it's uh, with MP or whatever team happens to win the championship, and he goes to them again. And uh, yeah, I think 
I think Hauger's a good driver. I don't know if he'll get into F1, but at the, at the least, he seems like he's doing a solid job. In P6, I've got Jack Doohan, another driver who's probably a bit disappointed this season. He had a very, very, very slow start to the season. He seems to be turning it uh, around lately, um, but because I think he won what, two future race wins in a row or something like that. So he's, he's starting to turn it around, starting to get it back together, but overall, you have to be consistent throughout the year if you want to be a champion. Jack has not done that so far, and he'll have to massively improve over the next three rounds. I don't actually know the results of Zandvoort, other than I know I mentioned one of the winners, but I do know that much, but overall, I don't actually know what happened in Zandvoort yet. I'm going to watch it sometime this week. P5, I put Ollie Behrman. He's a driver who I'm very, very, very high on. I don't know if he's quite Ferrari seat potential, but I definitely think Behrman could be in F1. Not next year. Definitely not next year. But maybe maybe two years from now, I can see him getting a, a shot with a team like maybe Haas if they finally decide to move on and maybe try someone younger again. Who knows? It seems like a lot of teams are trying to avoid the younger drivers right now, which is kind of sad. We need more teams on the grid, plain and simple. We need more teams. In P4, I put Victor Martens, last year's F3 winner. I don't think it's any big shock that he's having a very successful season. ART is a very good team in F2. I, you can see I even predicted Martin to be like right around this level. So I don't think anyone's too, too surprised that he's doing very good. He's had a little bit of inconsistencies here and there, but he's technically a rookie in this series. Granted, he could have probably been in F2 last year, but he decided to take that extra year. Good on him for being self-aware of needing that extra step. I think there's going to be a ton of pressure on him to be successful in F2 next year, though, now. Moving on to P3, I've got Yumu Awasa, a driver who I maybe didn't get enough, give enough credit to. I thought last year he kind of had some good performances, but I thought sticking with dams, I thought it wasn't going to go as good. I th you can see, yeah, I, he jumped up. I thought he was going to be closer to P8. I didn't think he was going to do bad by any means, but I didn't think he was going to continue this as much success as he's had, which of course leaves our final two. I don't think it's any surprise who the final two are, just more or less what about order I put them in because they've kind of flip-flopped throughout the year. So starting in P2, I put Frederick Vesti. I clearly, based on the number you can see next to his name, I definitely underrated him going into this season, and he's been proving me wrong. I think I remember saying something along the lines of he's not going to make it into F1. At this rate, he's probably going to be a reserve driver next year, whether that's for Williams or Mercedes. I think with this kind of season, I don't see him doing another year. I just especially considering he's in Mercedes management. I don't see him doing another year of F2. I see him going into reserve, a reserve role next year, whether that's... Um, uh, I don't know if it'll be with Mercedes. They seem pretty happy with Mick. So I can see him going to a team potentially like Williams, whether that's a reserve role, whether he takes Logan Sargent's job. I can see him potentially being an F1 as soon as next year, which obviously leaves the one driver in... P1, the guy who I kind of predicted to win the season. I don't think it's any surprise. I don't know if he's actually still in P1 after this last round. I have no clue. I'll find out in the next week. But Theo Porcher. It's fairly obvious he's the golden boy of F2 right now that everyone's kind of watching. Could potentially be taking a role with Alfa Romeo or Sauber or Audi, whatever the team is called next season. But I think he's definitely going to be not in F2 anymore at the very, very least. He's, he's, he's done. He, he's, he's done everything he's needed to do. There's only three rounds left. Just needs to wrap it up. I think if he wins the championship, I think he goes into F1. I think he gets a seat with Alfa Romeo. Which driver he replaces? That's a question. There's no really guaranteed that Bottas or Joe keep their job. I know there's been rumors around Joe for uh, his funding, but at the same time, I also feel like... There might be a willingness to try and get rid of Bottas because I think he has a much higher paycheck. And I don't think Joe's been underperforming, so I have a feeling that uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if Alfa Romeo decides to stick with the young drivers. See what happens from there. So that leaves my full order. I'll uh, 
quickly, I'll go back and forth maybe a couple times just to show the difference of my preseason predictions. So that's that's how I predicted it out at the start of the season. So yeah, looking overall, I'd say the biggest disappointments for this year has to be um, probably Hauger and Fittipaldi. Those are definitely the two drivers with the highest expectations who just haven't been able to live up to that right now. And of course, that makes the biggest um, performers who have rised much higher than I expected to be Vesti and Awasa. Those drivers have exceeded expectations. They're in P2 and P3 in my rankings right now. I'm not sure what the actual standings are. This isn't supposed to be reflective of the standings. If it's an exact match, I apologize. That just happened to be how my uh, calculator formatted everything. But you know what? With uh, everything said and done now that we've got this uh, video in place, I'm going to end on this, and I hope everyone has a great night. And I forgot to add my music. Crap. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everyone.